Hello and welcome back to the Stevenson Weekender sailboat build. In this episode we're going to build the bottom hull of the boat and attach it to the keel that we built in the previous video. Following the plans in the manual, I start out by establishing my station lines every 12 inches. For this part of the boat I'm using half inch marine grade plywood. I'll get the marks extended across the width of the plywood all the way down the panel. I will then get each of the station lines labeled to match the plans in the manual. Then just like I did on the keel, I'll make a mark on each side of that center blue line down each of the station lines that will determine the shape of the outside edge of the hull. Finished nails are then placed at each of these marks and a flexible batten is placed against these nails that I use to draw the line following this curve. The width of the final hull is wider than these four foot panels, so I have to cut a couple pieces that I'll attach to the sides to create a wider blank. Here I'm using some short brad nails to temporarily attach those side pieces to the edge of the panel. I then continue with the finished nails and flexible batten board to mark out the final part of the curve along the edges of the panel. And of course I had to do this on both sides. This last part I'm marking out now is the rear of the boat where the transom will attach. There's a little excess plywood at the end there that I'll start by trimming that off. The plans call for cutting the outside edge of the hull at 20 degrees, so I'll get my saw set up for that. I'll start here at the rear of the boat, and you can see that uh, 20 degree cut there on the edge. I'll just work my way around the rest of the boat following my lines that I'd drawn earlier, making sure the bevel of my saw is facing out at the top all the way around. plans in call for snipping off the tip of the uh, hull where it'll fit into the keel. Now I'll start the process of getting the pieces of the bottom hull epoxied together. The plans call for using uh, one by material as joiners along each of the joints of the plywood. So I started out by marking and then pre-drilling each of the holes for the screws that will attach the plywood to these joiners.
Now I'll mix up some of uh, Total Boat's 5 to 1 epoxy, unthickened, and use it as a uh, sealer uh, or a flood coat on all the joining parts. This serves to seal up the pores in the wood and allow for a stronger bond when I use the thickened epoxy later once the sealer coat has kicked off a little. Now I will apply some thickened epoxy, spreading it with a notch trowel to all the adjoining parts and begin to attach things with screws for the final time. Here I am attaching wider side joiners that I will then use to attach those small extra pieces that complete the width of the hole that I had cut earlier. And here is what it looked like after everything was epoxied and screwed down. The saw is still set at that 20 degree angle and I use it to cut off the waist of that wide joiner board. I was able to use this electric planer to smooth out the cut. I then did the same thing on the other side. I'll take a second away from the building to say that part of my motivation for building this boat is that I've had a grandson on the way, and we were blessed to welcome him into the world today. I'm looking forward to going sailing with you, son. Okay, back to the build. The next step is to cut some angled pieces of one by material to act as stringers along the edge of the hull. The plans call for a 23 degree angle on these. I first marked and pre-drilled the holes where these stringers will attach. I then dry fit everything and force the boards into the curve of the hull using these clamps. I then extended my pre-drilled holes into the stringer and I marked the end of the board to length. There's a compound angle to be cut there on the end of that stringer, so I used my pull saw for that. I did the exact same thing on the other side of the aft of the boat, and then moved to the front, where the curve was a little more severe and required more clamps. But once it was done and all the holes were pre-drilled, I was ready for epoxy. Here I'm again applying that sealer coat of unthickened epoxy to all the joining surfaces and I'll let it cure for a little while to start to get sticky before I move on with the thickened epoxy. I 
I will thicken the epoxy with some silica to a consistency somewhat like that of peanut butter. Then it was just a matter of applying the thickened epoxy, placing the stringers back into their spots and using the pre-drilled holes to screw them down. I was able to put a screw in one end and then use my other hand to apply force to the opposite side of the stringer so as to force it around that curve. You can perhaps see that a little better in this view. I then moved to the front of the boat and did the same thing. Even though these curves were more severe, it was still fairly easy to force the board around the curve using my pre-drilled holes. I let the epoxy cure for a few days and then we moved the finished hole down to the other building to get ready to attach it to the keel. Curiosity almost got this cat epoxied, so I had to move her out of the building. The keel had a layer of epoxy along its edge from squeeze out from when I had laminated that together. So I gave that a quick sanding with some 80 grit sandpaper to provide a better bond. Once that sealer coat had cured a little, I flipped the bottom hole over and then used an eye hook in the ceiling and some ratchet straps to help me position the hole over the keel. Once everything was positioned and ready to go, I mixed up more epoxy and thickened it again with the silica, again shooting for a consistency about the same as peanut butter. That will then be applied all along the top of the keel and spread with a notched trowel. And then I'll roll the keel underneath the hull and get everything positioned into place. The hull is forced down to follow the curve of the keel using screws. And I'm checking underneath often to make sure some rest reference lines that I drew are following the keel to make sure everything is staying straight. I then cleaned up the squeeze out all along the bottom of the joint between the hull and the keel. I was a little bit disappointed in how much waste there was here. So I used some of that to fill in the screw holes on the top of the hull. So here's the final result. It's exciting that it's starting to take shape. I hope you join me next time when we'll start to work on the bulkheads and the transom. As always, I appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like. And I'll see you next time as we continue to build the Stevenson Weekender sailboat.